Welcome to our lecture on the two-sample z-test for the difference between two proportions. When do you want to use this sort of uh, statistical test? Well, anytime you want to compare proportions or something that in effect is a proportion, like a rate. If you want to compare the rates of defectives uh, in computer chips that are supplied by two different companies, and you might use uh, one of the companies um, in your tablet computer that your firm manufactures. If you want to compare um, death rates for heart transplant surgery at two different hospitals. If you want to compare graduation rates for two high schools in the same area so you can choose where to send your children. These are the kinds of things that you'll be doing in this uh, lecture. We're going to be using the Z as a way of determining whether the, the observed difference between the two proportions is significant or just sampling error. Okay, now to use the Z, we need a larger sample. There won't be a T version of this. So for the small samples, forget it. You can't do the T test. It has to be relatively large. And here are the rules on the bottom. N1 times P1 should be greater than 5. Just look at it. So you'll see. See, relative, you need a relatively large sample to use the Z, uh, Z test for, for this purpose. This z-test is actually an approximation, which, by the way, is why we can't use the t if we have a small sample size, because that would be an approximation to an approximation, and we don't really want to go that far. Um, the formula you see over there, the sample uh, proportion from group 1 minus the sample proportion from group 2, and so on. On the right hand, it shows you how to get the sample proportion. Um, x1 over n1, x2 over n2, where x is, you, you might say, the number of successes or the number of hits. It's whatever it is that you're counting and that you're getting the rate of, like maybe number of defectives in total number of parts. And of course, n is the sample size for, for the individual group. n1, the sample size for group 1, n2, the sample size for group 2. Now notice the formula for Z requires, under the square root sign and the denominator, uh, a p-bar. It requires the pooled estimate of the population proportion. And what this is, is basically the um, sample proportion if you had not split your data into two, the, the two different groups. If you combine both the groups together, you get the uh, pooled proportion by taking um, x1 plus x2, and then on, in the denominator, n1 plus n2. And that's, that gives you the pooled estimate of the population proportion for the groups. Number one, we're comparing death rates at two hospitals. Okay, we've been looking at liver transplants in two similar hospitals in similar areas, and we notice in Hospital A, 77 out of 100 people died within six months of getting that liver transplant. In Hospital B, it's 120 out of 200. Clearly, you're comparing two proportions. Remember, HO is that the two proportions are the same. That's why we pool it, because under HO, you know, we're saying that there's no difference, so we pool it. Okay, now the question is, are the death rates for the two hospitals statistically different? We're going to test that alpha equals 0.05. Now, the sample sizes are large enough. In fact, combined, it's 300. We'll get 300 people. And um, this allows us to use the Z approximation. Okay, now we're ready to do the problem. HO is that there's no difference between the two proportions which is like P1 equals P2, or if you wish, P1 minus P2 equals zero. And the alternative, H1, is that P1 is not equal to P2. So it's a two-tailed test. And we didn't put the, uh, the O25 in the right, right tail and the O25 in the left tail. By now you know that it's, we took the O5, the alpha of O5, split into two. So you have 0.025 in the right and 0.025 in the left tail. Okay, now notice what we do. 
we look at the two proportions. PS1, 77 out of 100 died, that's 0 0.77. PS2 is 120 out of 200, that's 0 0.60. So really we're comparing 77% with 60%. And when we need that P bar, that's that pooled proportion. Remember on the HL there's no difference, so we're playing, you know, uh, devil's advocate, you know, the straw man. And we say, okay, on the HO we can combine it. So we combine the two to get that P bar. 77 plus 120 divided by 100 over plus 200 to 300 people. 197 over 300 is 0.657. So that's going to be, you'll see that 0.657 in the denominator. So we compare 0.77 minus 0.60. So you have 0.17. There's a 17% difference in the numerator. And then you have this huge thing in the square root, which is a lot easier to do. But just remember to do the thing in the parentheses first. First, do 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200. Then whatever you get, times that by 0.343, times that by 0.657. Take the square root, and you get 0.058. Your z value, it's an approximate z, is 2.93. Clearly, it's in the rejection region. Anything more than 1.96 would have been in the rejection region. 1.97, 1.98. And 2.93 is well into the rejection region. Reject your HO. The probability of getting this sample evidence if HO is true is less than 5%. In problem two, we're comparing two unemployment rates, the unemployment rates for County A and for County B. Remember, a rate is just a proportion, and if we're comparing two proportions, we're asking the question, are they really the same? Are they just two different samples taken from the same population, or are they statistically different? Uh, we're going to test that alpha equals 0.05, just to keep things simple. You already know how to do that. Here we solve the problem. We do the uh, hypothesis test, the two sample hypothesis test. The null hypothesis, again, um, the proportion from group one is equal to the proportion from group two. The alternate hypothesis, which we accept if we reject the null hypothesis, is that the two proportions are different. The sample proportion from group one, uh, 100 out of 400 was 0.25. That was the unemployment rate in uh, group one. And in group two, 44 out of 200, it was 0.22. That was the unemployment rate of, in group two. Uh, the uh, pooled um, P, the pooled proportion, ended up being 0.24, and, which kind of makes sense. And you see the, um, uh, the uh, uh, picture of the Z distribution under the null hypothesis. We're using alpha 0.05, so once again, we have 0.025 in each tail, and the critical values from the z-table are plus and minus 1.96. The calculated value of z from the data, from the sample evidence, um, working through the, the formula, uh, works out to 0.8, and that's in the big white area of non-rejection, um, so our conclusion is do not reject HO. The two unemployment rates are different, but the difference is only due to uh, sample variation. It could happen with any two samples, uh, even from the same county. We're going to examine real data. This is from the Donner Party. The study was actually published by Donald Grayson, and he wanted to know, where the survival rate on the conditions of starvation is different for men and women. In other words, are men or women more likely to survive? Who's more likely to survive when there's no food? Well, you can't do an experiment like this, obviously. You can't starve people. But they looked at the Donner Party, and you can see a little bit about the background. They were traveling from Illinois to California, had a huge blizzard, there's no food for months, and they actually didn't kill each other, but they were nice to each other. But if somebody died, they had to resort to cannibalism. And we know the death rate for the women was 10 out of 34. 10 out of 34 women died. And uh, for the men, it was 30 over 53. Now, you can see why you need a statistical test. You can't just simply say that, um, you know, more men died. Uh, it may just be chance variation. So we're going to test at the 05 significance level 
to see whether the de death rates for men and women are statistically different from each other. Anyway, now we're going to do the, pr the problem. HO is at P1 equals P2. But there's no de difference in death rates when there's no food. Men and women have the same survivabil survivability, if that's a word. And H1 is at P1 is not equal to P2. Okay, we pool it. Pretend it's one group. HO is no difference. We combine the men and the women. We have 40 deaths out of 87 people, which is 0.46. Okay, that's P bar. P bar is 0.46. Okay, so we're comparing... This is a Z. We're comparing 0.294 minus 0.566. Okay, so in the numerator we have minus 0.272. And in the denominator you have the square root of 0.46 times 0.54. Then in parentheses, which remember you got to do that first, 1 over 34 plus 1 over 53. After you do the thing in the parentheses, Multiply that by 0.54 times 0.46, take the square root, and you end up with 0 0.1095 in the denominator. You end up with a z-value of minus 2.48. Now, as for the previous two problems, you know what happens when you took the alpha of 05 and you split it. So you have 025 in the right tail, which gives you a z-value of plus 1.96. 025 in the left tail, which is a z-value of minus 1.96, minus 2.48 is in the rejection region. So basically, we reject HO. We conclude that the survival rates for men and women are, are different. In fact, the author of the study explained why he believes that women have a higher survival rate under starvation conditions than men. Women have an extra layer of fat tissue. And that's there, so the fetus, and of course the woman herself, has enough nourishment in the case of a famine. It's not uncommon, sadly, in this world that uh, people starve. I mean, that's one of the, hopefully you are aware of the, what's going on in many parts of the world. There's not enough food. Food deprivation is a serious problem. So, you know, um, women have that extra layer of fat that's there for, for them and, of course, for the any, if they get pregnant, for a fetus. So according to this study, and it's been corroborated with another study, the same thing happened. And in both studies, the women did better than the men when there was no food. Another theory, and that's that the men got very annoying, uh, and the women might have bumped them off for the food. So perhaps there's another reason why uh, women were more likely to survive uh, under these conditions than men. Just the theory. Here we go again, but this one's a little different. Um, pass rates. College X claims that its pass rate on the bar exam is significantly greater than the pass rate of College Y on the bar exam. We want to use a significance level alpha of 0.01 for this test. The difference is the claim. Um, I know till now we were only looking at two sample tests um where we're where there the test is a two-tail test we're going to reject on either the right or the left but the way this is written lends itself towards a one-tail test the college claims its pass rate is greater which means we we will end up on the next slide setting up the null hypothesis the straw man to knock that down and prove that it's greater, that would be H1. We'll see how that works. Meanwhile, here's the data. Um, in College X, 130 passed the test out of 200. In College Y, 208 passed out of 400. You see the two sample proportions there. Um, PSX is 0 0.65, that's 130 over 200. Uh, the sample proportion of College Y is 0.52. That's 208 over 400. And we have to first get, as we know, it's the same as before, we have to compute P bar, uh, the, the average proportion um, of, of the samples, as if they were one. Um, so you have the two numerators, the two denominators, and you end up with a P bar of 0.563. Um, make note that this 563 should be in between the two sample proportions, and indeed it is. All right, so let's see how that one-tail test looks on the next slide. 
Okay, again, we have the straw man. HO is that the uh, pass rate for college X is less than for college Y. Of course, they're hoping to refute that and shoot it down. And uh, if we reject HO, then we're left with H1, which is a, X ha does have a, a significantly higher pass rate on the bar exam than college Y. So now we do the uh, convert everything to a Z score. And notice that the rejection region, notice H1 points to it, is on the right. And the critical value is 2.33, the Z. That's at the O1 level. Okay, we end up with a Z score of 3.02. So we're in the rejection region, which tells us the sample evidence has less than 1% chance of occurring. And basically, we reject the HO. Okay, so we end up rejecting HO. So it sounds like and now H1 is that that college X does have a higher pass rate. That sample evidence of 65% for the sample we took from college X is significantly better than the pass rate for college Y, which is 52%. So we reject HO, and now college X can make that claim. And we uh, basically we say the claim is fine. The record. In the previous slide, you were given a, a, an insane theory as to why uh, women have a higher survival rate than men. Do not accept that theory. That is bias. We're trying to teach you not to listen to bias and only look at the facts. The facts are women have a higher survival rate. We talked about why. Okay? It's not because men are annoying. Anyway. <laughs> I want the microphone back. Anyway. Uh, we're here to teach you how to use statistics and not to use stupid uh, theories that have no basis in statistics. As you know, we keep urging you to do more and more problems. We have lots of them all over our website. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, this is, uh, actually, the two sample Z-test proportions are used quite a bit. Companies are always comparing uh, like pass rates on different things and uh, survival rates. It's always done, defective rates. So just do lots of problems. you get good at this. Okay, and good luck.